Okay, in this video we're going to prove this theorem that I stated a little while ago which says that if f from g to h is a smooth holomorphism of matrix groups and little f is what you get by taking log of f of x so that's a locally defined map between the Lie algebras little g and little h then for a start little f is linear in the sense that it's a restriction of a linear map which I'm going to call f star from little g to little h to a neighborhood of the zero matrix in little g. So it's obtained by restricting a linear map to some small open set. Second, big F of x x equals x of f star x for all x in the Lie algebra. And remember this equation is true if you replace f star with little f and all x by all x in the neighborhood of the zero matrix, not just by definition of little f. And finally, f star is a homomorphism of Lie algebras in the sense that f star of x bracket y equals the bracket of f star x with f star y for all x and y in the Lie algebra little g. Okay, let's prove this. So the first observation um, is that for all x in the Lie algebra, x tx is a one parameter subgroup of G. We proved this um, when we talked about one parameter subgroups. In fact, all one parameter subgroups have this form. So what I can do is I can apply f, a big F this is, to x tx, and I get a one parameter subgroup in H. So this first guy is in G and this second one is in H. Why is that? Well remember a one parameter subgroup is just a smooth homomorphism from R into our group. So if I post compose that with another smooth homomorphism I get a smooth homomorphism into the target group. And as I said by what we proved this time, uh, last time, um, f of x t x being a one parameter subgroup means it has to have the form x t y for some y in the Lie algebra of H. Now here is a picture of our group G. It's just a sort of blob, and here's a picture of our group H. It's just another blob, and the map between them. Capital F. Here's the identity in G, here's the identity in H, and here are the one parameter subgroups that I'm talking about. So this is x tx, some kind of path in G passing through the identity at t equals zero, and this is x ty, which is also the image of this path x tx under this map F. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw on here a small red ball near the identity in G and in H. And these are going to be my uh, exponential charts. This is the image of the exponential chart. So this is where the local logarithm is defined. Um, and you can see that for sufficiently small t, when t is sufficiently close to zero, we land in this red region. So for small t, we can assume that x tx is in this red region and x ty are both in the um, image of the exponential chart on g and h respectively which means we can take logarithms of those okay it also means that we have f of x t x equals x of little f t x when t is sufficiently small. Because that's how little f was defined, right? Little f was log of f applied to x. So if we just take x of both sides there, we get f of x of t x equals x of little f of t x for small t. And by comparing with what we've got at the top of the page here, 
this is also equal to x t y. And again, for small t, we can take logarithms and we deduce that little f of tx equals ty. Okay. Now, little f is a smooth map, it's infinitely differentiable. So I can take its Taylor series to some order. That's what I'm gonna do. So there's a constant term, which is gonna be zero, because when I set t equal to zero here, I just get zero. There's a first order term, which is linear in t, and we can compute that first order term using the chain rule. So we first differentiate f at zero, and then we apply that to the derivative of what's inside here, which is tx. So that'll just be x. If I differentiate that with respect to t. And then we have higher order terms. Or sort of correction terms which go to zero faster than t. Um, but by comparing with the previous line we can see that actually d0f applied to x equals y and all the higher order terms vanish so there's no correction. just by comparing this line with the previous line. Right? So the previous line just says ty is the entire Taylor expansion of this function of t. Um, in particular, this is telling us that f of tx equals ty, which equals t times d0f applied to x, which equals, because d0f is just a linear map, it's a matrix, this is d0f applied to tx. And this is true for all x and all sufficiently small t. So that's telling us that if you take x and you rescale it until it lives inside this, um, this exponential chart, then for those very small x's, f is really just given by its linear term d0f. So that proves the first part of the theorem where f star is this d0f. So let me just quickly remind you what d0f is. It's this matrix whose entries are the partial derivatives of the entries of f with respect to the coordinates. So d0f is this matrix whose ijth entry is df i by dx j where you've picked coordinates on little h and on little g, and that's what these i's and j's are. So this proves one, and actually two is, um, two follows, because we've already shown that f of exp tx equals um, x ty and we've shown that e, that y is um, where is it previous line y is d0 f applied to x in other words it's f star of x so this is x of t f star x and now this is true for all t so previously we were saying everything's true for small t but this comes from um, this comes from something much earlier, which was this thing I've underlined in blue, that f of x tx equals x ty, and that's true for all t. We didn't need to assume that t was small there. Okay, so now we can set t equal to one, and we get f of x x equals x of f star x for all x little g. Okay, so we need to prove three, 
uh, which says that uh, f star preserves the Lie bracket, the commutator bracket. So to do that, I'm going to consider the following expression: exp t x times exp t y times exp of minus t x times exp of minus t y. This is an expression we considered before when we were thinking about commutators. Um, and in general, if you're trying to prove something about a commutator, this is a good way to start taking the um, sort of exp of something, exp of something else, exp of minus the first thing and exp of minus the second thing. That's a good way to start if you think about commutators. So we can use the baker campbell hausdorff formula to multiply these two together and these two together. And if you remember, what we get is um, exp t x plus y plus um, a half t squared x bracket y plus higher order terms. We do the same over here. We end up with exp of minus t x plus y plus a half t squared x bracket y plus higher order terms. And now we can use the baker campbell hausdorff formula to multiply these two guys together and we get exp of the sum. And in the sum, the t x plus y and the minus t x plus y cancel and we just get a half t squared x bracket y plus a half t squared x bracket y, which gives us t squared x bracket y. And all the other terms um, will turn out to give us uh, higher order terms. So this will be order t cubed. Um, right, you might worry about the term that's like t x bracket y, sorry, x plus y bracket with t x plus y, but that vanishes because x plus y bracket x plus y vanishes. Okay, so now if I apply f to this whole expression, what I get is by part two, exp of f star t squared x bracket y. And because f star is linear, that's just t star, uh, t squared f star x bracket y. Plus higher order terms. Um, I can also expand this a different way because f is a homomorphism, so I can take it inside uh, this product and I just get f of x tx times f of x ty times f of x minus tx times f of x minus ty and now again I can take f inside the exps and it becomes an f star so I get x of t f star x times x of t f star y times x of minus t f star x times x of minus t f star y. And now by doing the same trick with the baker campbell hausdorff formula, I multiply all these guys together and what I get is x of t squared f star x bracket f star y plus higher order terms. And now if I take t to be small, I can take logarithms and I get t squared um, f star x bracket f star y plus higher order terms equals uh, t squared f star x bracket y plus higher order terms and just taking the second order part or you know, differentiating twice and setting t equal to zero, I get that f star x bracket f star y equals f star x bracket y, which proves exactly the uh, equation I wanted. So what we've shown then is, if we go back and look, there's this linear map f star which is a Lie algebra homomorphism. And it satisfies this great property that f of x by x equals x of f star x for all x in the Lie algebra. So this reduces us to studying homomorphisms of Lie algebras.
which turn out to be a lot simpler than homomorphisms of matrix groups. And this is something we're going to use for the rest of the course to study representations of matrix groups.